Welcome back. In this video, we'll explore the other half of what makes blockchain so special. We know that blockchain is immutable. Once something is added, it can't be written over or changed in any way. But all on its own, immutability isn't so special. The other most important feature of blockchain is that it is distributed. This is a really cool concept. The blockchain is stored on a network with many computers all across the world. Each of them contains a full copy of the entire blockchain. When a block is added to the blockchain, it's sent to all the other computers on the blockchain as well. Because we have all these copies, the data on the blockchain is not under any one person's control. It's distributed. But there's a challenge with keeping track of so many copies, which is that each of these computers could potentially disagree on the current state of the blockchain. To deal with such potential disagreements, we have what's called distributed consensus. Consensus is a way of getting agreement across the blockchain network. We need this agreement so that if someone asks, what's the latest true state of the blockchain? Well, we can give them the one true answer that's shared by everyone. Let's take one more look at what happens when we add a block to the blockchain. At first, this is done on one machine. When that block is fully formed, it's sent to all of the other computers or nodes in the network. Each of these other computers here validates that block to make sure that it follows all of the rules of the blockchain. For example, when they recompute the hash of this block, they check to see that it matches what was sent them. If it doesn't, they just don't add that block to their copy. So what's the consensus part? The process of determining consensus means that a majority of the computers on the network need to agree on the latest current state. To be exact, that means that at least 51% of computers participating need to agree. If they do, there's consensus and that block is finalized. This is the new true state of our blockchain. And if some node on the network is acting maliciously, well, because everything on the blockchain is visible to everyone, they can be flagged and punished or removed from the network entirely. Let's go back to our example when a hacker tries to change a block for their own malicious purposes. Changing anything related to the block would result in the hash of that block changing as well, which then makes the previous hash of the next block invalid which breaks the entire chain after the hacked block. This would be a problem if we weren't distributed, allowing hackers to break our entire database by corrupting the data in one of the blocks. But with a distributed blockchain, we now have many copies of this data. Say one of the copies lives on a computer that's run by a hacker, who then changes a previous block for their own benefit, before that change is applied across all the computers with their own copies, it would need to be verified first. We would need consensus. Unless the hacker could somehow gain control over 51% of all the computers in the network all at the same time, well, their change would basically just be ignored. While this type of 51% hack 
is theoretically possible, this would be extremely expensive to accomplish. Probably even more expensive than any benefit that it would give to the hacker. And even if hackers did gain control over 51% of the blockchain network, they wouldn't be able to destroy old blocks. They would only be able to verify changes since they gained control, which means that in the worst case, as long as the hackers are eventually caught, we could roll back the state of the blockchain to before they gained control. So that's one of the advantages of blockchain, that it doesn't require trust. We don't need to trust everyone who joins the network because we instead rely on consensus. All right, so consensus allows everyone to agree. But why deal with all of this in the first place? Why is being distributed a good thing? Well, a centralized database that lives in one location or on one computer has a single point of failure. If that one database gets corrupted or hacked or loses power, you lose access to the entire system. Instead, if you remove the need for any centralized system, everything becomes a lot more resilient to failure. The data is distributed, which means that if one of the computers runs into a problem, there's still many other copies of the data available. And because anyone can view the data, it's also more transparent. We don't have to trust a central authority on what the database actually contains, and that's even if the central authority was willing to tell us. Blockchain being distributed is what allows us to say that it's decentralized. When you have a system that's distributed and there's no central authority that's in control of it, you have a decentralized system. With this understanding, we can start diving in to how blockchain is used, why it's being used, and what the advantages and disadvantages of it are. The pieces are starting to come together. In the next video, let's look at one of the many possible applications of the blockchain. I'll see you there.